And moving on to the brushes here, uh, down the left hand side of the screen is where your brushes are is going to be. And as I mentioned in the previous video, depending on which persona you're in, those brushes are going to change. We're only going to focus on the photo persona and the selection persona in this particular video. Um, a lot of them are self-explanatory. I think if you're into design and familiar with, you know, any other kind of uh, graphic app, but let's kind of go through these really quick. We're going to try to make this a quick video. The, uh, hand, and again, if you press the question mark, uh, you can always see the technical names and everything. So the view tool is uh, just going to kind of let you move your, your palette around, but you could also do the same thing just with your fingers. Um, the move tool, depending on what you have selected, is going to let you move the, that around, resize it, whatever you need. Um, moving on, we then have the uh, color picker. Um, if you hold on to the palette, you can then pick a color. Uh, you can go over and it's going to put the color up in the top uh, of this and you won't get to actually use that color until you select it. But, you know, that's how that works. We got the crop, uh, which is good to have a lot of. Um, and then you got to hit the check mark to actually make it effect a lot of these mobile uh apps that are kind of similar kind of photo editing apps uh, they don't have a crop and it's really good to see a crop in affinity photo for ipad uh the flood tool we went over the um gradient tool let's just quickly make a new layer here and we will use the gradient tool on it and then we'll go to color and all you got to do is select a color edge and you can twist that that way. And let's go make this a more yellowish and then we can play with it like so. And that's how you do the gradients. And of course that could be, let's just go ahead and drop this down. Okay. And uh, moving on, we then have uh, brushes again. Let's go ahead and make a new layer. And we are going to go then to the brush palette. Um, and there's a lot of different uh, options here. Uh, let's go with, uh, let's just go with drawing. That's fine. And, uh, you know, that's what the brush palette does. And furthermore, this little button down in the corner here, when that's on, what that is is your pen pressure for, um, for if you have an Apple Pencil. So that's what that is. And you do have to make sure you have a brush with pressure selected. Okay, uh, that layer I'm actually just going to get rid of. Oh, well, let me undo that and move on down to the brush or the eraser and we can just erase it. So also that brings me to, if, if you'll notice, some of these uh, tools have this little like triangle thing in the corner. And what that means is you can click it and then there's a sub folder for more stuff. The brushes uh, also contain uh, the pixel brush and the mixer brush, etc. cetera. Uh, we're gonna now move down to this subfolder, which has your dodge and your burn and smudge and blur. A lot of these are self-explanatory, um, but we will get into these more in an advanced class. This is more stuff that you're going to use for photo retouching and stuff like that. Uh, kind of the same with this tool, except for I will show you the in-painting brush, which is uh, kind of a, we're, we're going to get into that in this. Let's say, for example, that we wanted to go down to this here and we just want to take this home button off of this iPad. We're gonna make sure that's layer selected and then there we go. So that's the in painting brush in a nutshell, which gets used a lot. The undo brush is uh, another advanced thing. We're not gonna get into that into this tutorial series. That's gonna be something that's a little more advanced. The pen tool, uh, you know, like any other pen tool, you can make shapes and trace stuff out and uh, color it in and do effects to it, all that fun stuff. Uh, if you don't want to draw something out, there are plenty of shapes here that are already pre-made, and that's all you have to do for that. Uh, then finally, the text. There are two texts. There is the big text and text that is framed. So if you were, for example, doing uh, uh, 
uh, you know, just normal text. We'll just type in affinity. And then if you were doing maybe a text underneath it and you just wanted a little blurb, we're just going to type in some, uh, let's make this font bigger. Oops. And this select font, you just got to go over it. And now you can see that it's, it's being constrained within its uh, confinement square there. So that's pretty much all of that. Um, jumping over here, these are, uh, for the most part, they're pretty self-explanatory. Uh, we then have the move tool. You can then paint uh, selections. You can lasso selections. Uh, you can draw a square around them. We did the uh, we did that in the last one. You can uh, select a color, which is a really good thing to do. Uh, let's go down to this, and as you can see, we're like selecting that red, and now we're kind of moving up. And the tolerance here is uh, how much of that color. So it's perfect. You know, you can literally see with it being a gradient how much color is getting selected. Uh, feathering, you know, if you have something selected and you want to feather it out a little bit, uh, we went over the grow and shrink. The smooth selection is going to do just that. Um, the outline, we and then finally the refinement, we had that square selected. This is a bad example because there's not that much going on, but you can always kind of go in and edge and pick something out and what it's going to do is it's going to refine it as you can see in uh this little section here so uh we pretty much went over these tools we're going to go over them more as we do a project but i just wanted to really take a second and point everything out and show you all the tools let's go quickly in the next video over the left hand side here and just kind of point all that out and then i promise we're going to get into the fun stuff